I am a storyteller. Very young, I realized I had a passion for books, reading. I loved to take in knowledge. I also loved to watch TV. Who loves to watch TV here? And I love to watch everything. I loved Scooby-Doo. I loved Star Wars. I loved Star Trek. And I took in a lot of information. And over the years, I've developed my career in the media. And I was very blessed earlier this year to be welcomed into the Archbishop Desmond Tutu Leadership Program. And we were challenged to start a project that would transform the African continent. And I sat back and asked myself, what do I have to offer Africa and where is the gap? And I started to interview African leaders and started a show called the African Leadership Dialogues. That was the gap. We were not having dialogues with our leaders about the problems on the continent. So we started these dialogues. And whether it was South Africa, West Africa, East or North Africa, something emerged that we have a wider gap. And the bigger, most dangerous gap is the gap in the African story. Where did we come from? What happened? What are our cultures and value systems of yore? What do we let go of? What do we move on, on with? What was the struggle for that right to vote that we hold so dear today? And therefore, what does that vote mean to me? If you ask a lot of people on the streets, there are many who would not be able to answer these questions. In Africa's urban areas, if you ask a 10-year-old to give you five cultural stories of their nation or of their community, they might not be able to give you those five stories. But they know Scooby-Doo, right? Many urban children will know Scooby-Doo and they'll know Star Trek and Star Wars. And this is a problem. So what's the solution? I started to look back on what happened to Africa after the colonizers left. And in many of our countries, and certainly here in Kenya, what happened was we started buying television content from our colonial, our former colonial masters. So here in Kenya, we had a lot of BBC shows on air. And we grew up acclimatized to the English values and the English system. We also, interestingly, had a lot of German content on our TV growing up which is fascinating. I think they sold it to us at a really reasonable cheap price or gave it to us free. They certainly supported KC, KBC, which was the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, then called Voice of Kenya. And that was very strategic. And I asked myself, why has Africa never gone to offer its content to other countries? Why are we always buying content? And this remains a huge problem today. But I just want to emphasize the reason why content is so important. I, I work in the news industry, but I'm not going to focus on news today. We all know the importance of news, right? So let me know, not focus on that. I want to focus on three particular shows that had a huge impact on their cultures and on their people. The first one is, is, is a show called Roots. It's a mini series that was produced decades ago, and it was produced out of a book written by an African-American man called Alex Haley. Roots aired in the US in 1977 and had a huge impact on race relations in the US at the time. For the first time, a white American male was able to understand the pain of a black African man stolen from the shores of West Africa, put into a slave ship, transported to the US and enslaved for the first time. And it had a huge impact on the nation. The second show I want to focus on is one that many of you may have watched. It's called 24. Who watched the series 24? I see hands going up. So we may think it was all about terrorism and Jack Bauer, you know, all out there with his gun the whole time and saving, saving the US, but there's a deeper impact that 24 had that I think is not recognized by many people. Number one, the best president 
during the whole series on 24 was a black man called David Palmer. And when I watched 24, I think it was episode, uh, series three or four, I remember saying, the US is going to elect a black president because it impacts on your perspective. You think, oh, if, if this guy could have done it, David Palmer was great, maybe it's not such a, maybe it's not such a dangerous thing. That is the impact of commercial content on us. It has huge impact. The other thing 24 did was it taught people at a time when there was so much fear in the US that in fact not every Arab is a terrorist. And that was important. Star Trek and Space 1999. This iPad that I hold, guys, way back when Star Trek first started, they had the iPad. They had a mobile phone in, in form of a communicator. The only thing we haven't been able to do so far is transport ourselves in an energizer, and I'm hoping that's coming soon. So pushing our boundaries in terms of what we think and what we do. Your challenge, if you are in Africa, or if you are African, is clear. You must find a way of telling the African story. The Mau Mau took the British government to court after decades to ask for an apology and some kind of restitution for the violence that they endured. Now there was violence against the colonizer as well, yes, from the Mau Mau, but the story that was not told was the Mau Mau story. My commitment to Africa is I'm going to start telling Africa's stories. And next year I start to produce a series called Days of Affliction. It tells the stories of the Mau Mau, tells the story of the ordinary citizen who was neither Mau Mau nor home, home guard, and also tells the story of the home guard. If you are an artist, if you are a poet, if you write music, I want to challenge you to start thinking of how you are going to communicate the African story because this continent is rising. And without telling our story, we are lost in a quagmire of not knowing who we are or where we came from. Thank you.